So what is the difference between a hub, a switch, and a router? When you first get started studying computer networking, it can seem like all three of these devices are similar. After all, they all connect multiple devices together to actually make a network, right? And though they are similar in a lot of different ways, each of these different components has their own specialty in computer networks. So what makes each one unique? The most unique characteristic of each of these three components is the way they handle data. The way they receive it, look at it, and send it back out other physical ports where network cables or media are connected. I'm going to show you the hub first. Now, a side note, you can seldom if ever buy a new hub as they are barely in production anymore. In fact, I'm not sure they are in production anymore. I'm not sure anybody makes them. You may still be able to find them on the aftermarket or on websites like Craigslist or eBay, but even on Amazon, if you search for hub, you get small office or home office switches, which aren't actually hubs like hubs used to be. So that's just my little side note. As you study networking more, you will see why hubs aren't used or sold anymore. But for now, I just want to show you the basic workings of a hub and reiterate that you need to know about hubs when taking a certification exam. And I think the biggest reason behind still having hubs on exam questions is to test to make sure you know the history of computer networking and how computer networks got started. So what is or what was a hub? The purpose of a hub was to connect all of your devices together on an internal network. And a hub has multiple ports that have Ethernet connections from multiple devices. A hub is considered unintelligent because it does no filtering of data or deciding where that data will be sent once it arrives on any of its own ports. The only thing a hub understands is when a device is connected on one of its ports. When a data packet arrives on one of the hub's ports, it is simply copied to all the other ports and sent out. This is one of the biggest problems with hubs in that all devices connected to that hub see the same data packet. And again, when, data, when a data packet arrives on a hub's port, it replicates that and then sends it out all the other ports other than the one it came in on. In this example, if we had these four computers connected on the same hub and this computer wanted to communicate only with this computer, all other computers connected to the hub would have to see the same data packet of information. The two biggest issues with hubs were because of this right here. This presents a security issue in that other computers can see the information not really meant for them, and it presents a traffic issue because you're creating a higher volume of traffic than is actually needed on your network. This is also considered a waste of bandwidth on your network. This leads us to the switch. A switch is similar to a hub in that it has multiple physical ports that accept Ethernet connections from multiple devices. However, unlike a hub, a switch is considered intelligent in that it learns the physical address, the MAC address, of each device connected to it, and it stores those addresses in a MAC address table, or sometimes it's called a CAM table. By the way, how does a switch learn about those addresses on each device connected? It learns those MAC addresses from the source address portion of a frame when it arrives from the device connected on that physical port. Now, I get more in-depth about that in other videos. In fact, you can check out this video for a more detailed explanation. So when a data packet arrives on a switch, it's only directed to the intended destination port, or the port with the intended recipient computer device connected. That's another way to phrase it. It is not replicated and sent out all other ports like a hub does. In this example, if this computer here wanted to send data to this computer here, when the switch receives it, the switch will look at its table of MAC addresses and corresponding ports and deliver the data to the correct port, the correct destination port, and consequently to the intended device that's connected on that port. Another side note, the switch looks at the destination MAC address portion of the incoming frame to compare that to the MAC addresses in its own table that it learned from all the devices connected to it. It looks at that destination MAC address and then it sends it out the correct port. This allows the data packet to only go to the intended computer or device. This is the biggest difference between a switch and a hub and is why switches are much preferred over the old hubs. This also reduces all unneeded or unnecessary traffic on your network. So a quick recap comparison of hubs and switches. Hubs only detect if a device is connected on one or more of its physical ports. Switches actually keep a record on their internal table of those specific devices connected because they keep and store the detected MAC addresses of those connected devices. Hubs and switches are used to exchange data and connect devices within a local area network or a LAN. This is typically a home network or a small to mid-sized business. Again, hubs are seldom used or seen anymore because of their being outdated now. Hubs and switches are not used to exchange data with another network outside their own 
network, such as the internet or another network across the internet. In order to exchange data outside your own network, you need a device that reads and understands IP addresses. Hubs and switches don't read or understand IP addresses in the packet portion of the data, you know, inside the packet inside the frame. Routers come into play for just this reason. Routers do exactly what their name implies. They route or forward data from one network to another network based on the device's IP addresses in the packet portions of the data. When a data packet arrives on a router, the router inspects the IP address and determines if the packet is meant for its own network or for another network. If the router determines the data packet is meant for its own network, it receives it. If it's not meant for its own network, it sends it off to another network. This is where a router actually gets its name of being called the gateway of a network. And you'll oftentimes hear it referred to by those in the industry as the default gateway. And when you get into routing and routing outside of your network, the router that connects to other networks outside of yours is going to be called the default gateway. Its interface, its IP address will be the default gateway. So if something's not meant for something inside your network, it will be routed out through that router to the other networks. In this example, we have this LAN, local area network, a private network with its router that we'll call the blue network. And again, the colors I use here are for the 60% of us human beings out here that are actually visual learners. We'll have multiple data packets coming in over here or up here outside our LAN on the other side of the router or outside the router of the gateway. I'll show them with multiple colors because each of those little colors represents different IP addresses of information. They're going to be arriving on the blue network's router from the internet. Now this router is only going to accept the blue data packets because they are the only ones intended for this blue network. All of the other data packets yellows, reds, greens, etc. will be rejected or unaccepted or routed elsewhere by this router because they were not intended for this network. Their IP addresses were not meant for or destined for this network. This example shows an expanded view of routers on the internet. There are four LANs local area networks connected with all of these routers, but as you can see, each local area network is only exchanging data and information with other devices on their same network using their own hub or switch. Again, it's probably a switch in most cases. So what happens when we want to exchange data between different networks? Let's say, for example, this computer on our original blue network wants to communicate and exchange data with a computer over here on the yellow network. In order for this to happen, a data packet has to leave its own network and venture out on the internet across these routers. The first computer, here in the blue network, will send its data and it actually hits the uh, through its switch and it actually hits the blue network's router. Once the router examines the destination IP address of the data packet, it determines it is meant for another network other than its own and it forwards the data out to that next router. By the way, this is called the next hop when you're referring to routing. It then makes its way to the yellow network's router, then to the intended destination computer or device on that yellow network. Now what I just showed you is the basic function of routers. So to sum this whole thing up, hubs and switches are used to create networks, and it can be said that routers are used to connect different networks to each other.